Welcome back to Books TV. In tonight's episode, we have interviews with first team manager Gary Haywood, first team coach and academy manager Nigel Keogh, and Danny also catches up with last season's top scorer Diego after he signs a new two-year deal with the Books. Our show kicks off with highlights from Tuesday night's 2-1 victory over Hallam FC with goals from Nico and Diego de Girolamo. Next up, Danny speaks to first team manager Gary Haywood here on Books TV. Gary, thanks for joining us again. Um, six wins on the bounce pre season. Um, obviously, Diego signed now as well. That's the, the latest addition to your squad. It seems like you've sort of settled on, on what you've got now. Is that sort of the case for yourself? Or, um, you know, I mean, do you, do you feel you're ready for the season that's coming ahead now? Um, ready, not just yet. Got three weeks left yet, which we're going to do a lot of work, shape, pattern, and things like that. What we need in the squad, but as players wise, yeah, we we're the old players. Obviously, we've got one or two niggles that we've got to get right for start of the season. But um, yeah, we're looking strong, which is good. And next three weeks, we should look stronger and even better. Obviously, touching on the squad now, um, it's a strong squad. Um, do you feel like you've now got rotation in the side as well? That my benefit you this season and, and, and the next couple of pre-season games about giving opportunities to look at the different ways that maybe you could set up during the season. Yeah, we've got rotation in the squad because obviously we're going to be playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. So we need everybody fit because we need to call on everyone within a week, like two games a week. And like you said, the season's going to be compact. So it's just got to be all systems go from the World Cup. And we had a few highlights from the, uh, the, the Hallam game the other night um, that we played earlier. Um, obviously, Nico and, and Diego on the score sheet. Could it have been more, maybe, for, you, for your team, do you think? Yeah, I just think at the minute we're missing that cutting edge. We're creating a lot of chances, but we're just not... The final ball's letting us down a little bit. And goalkeepers are playing well against us. Defensively, we're not having a lot to do. Midfield-wise, we're dominating again. I just think the final ball maybe you've got to be a little bit quicker or a little bit more quality in the final third, but it's, it's coming. You've got three sort of tough op opponents coming up, obviously league, league below, but they, they looked strong last year, obviously they came here to the, for, for a pre-season game as well, they looked good up here last year. Um, Chorley on the Tuesday, and then obviously finish with Chester before we go into the season the, the following week. Do you think it's important to have those kind of games at this point, right before the start of the season? Yeah, definitely, definitely. We don't... You don't want to be playing anybody that's going to be a walkover now. You need hard tests, so you know your yardstick to where your side is. And I think with League, Chorley and Chester, we will know by the Chester game where we, would, where we will be and what we've got to get for the first game. And obviously, just, just touching back on the Hallam game, um, I guess one of the big things was obviously the return of the fans to, to the Tarmac Sylvan Stadium. We had 300, it went well. Um, Obviously, they got to see your squad for the first time. Obviously, the squad got to play in front of the fans. It steps up to 600 now. Obviously, some big games coming in where the team, the other teams are probably going to bring some away fans with them. Do you think that's going to be good for the players to start getting that bit of atmosphere behind them as well? So it's not just almost a training game now. It's actually it's going to feel like something competitive. Yeah, it's great now the fans are back, Dan. Obviously, um, that's what you need. It's, like I said before in the first interview, there's no friendly games. And now the fans are back in. Their, ex their expectations are really high. And we've got to put show on for them. We've got to work hard and do the job. And now, just obviously moving away from the first team and, and I guess back onto the, uh, the, the development squad and the academy that we spoke about last time, um, I'm going to speak to uh, Nigel Keogh, the academy manager, later on. Um, they've got the FA Youth Cup coming up next Thursday. Um, do you think that's a good progression for the club 
you know, I mean, seeing these lads getting to, to compete in, in competitions sort of prestigious like the FA Youth Club. Yeah, it's brilliant for the club. It's good. Obviously, um, I'll be up here watching, hopefully, and hope the lads do really well. Nigel, obviously, know what we want, and um, we'll get some fans in and support them really good. Great. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us again, and obviously, hope to get, see you again soon, and uh, good luck uh, tomorrow. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Still to come, we have interviews with fans' favourite Diego, plus Nigel Keogh previewing our forthcoming Academy FA Youth Cup fixture. Thanks for joining us here on Books TV. Nigel, thanks for joining us on uh, Books TV. Um, obviously, first team coach, ac academy manager. Um, obviously, predominantly we're here to talk about the FA Youth Cup coming up next week. Um, Ashton Town coming to the Tarmac Sylvan Stadium. As as an academy manager, first of all, you know, in, ha how good is that for you, for your lads to be to be part of that competition this year? It's fantastic. Um, obviously, it's the first fixture of our competitive season. Um, you know, it's the first thing we talk about when we, we get the lads in to show them the facilities. Um, we talk about the pathways and the level of competition that we're going to be playing. Um, and the lads are buzzing for it. You know, training's gone well, pre season's gone well, and we're all excited for next Thursday. Obviously, touched on the academy, you know, the lads involved, that obviously you get more and more lads coming in each year. Um, year one last year seemed to go well. Um, the, lads, the lads played well. We've got some lads going in towards the first team, playing in some games, signing forms. Um, for you, also being the first team coach, obviously heading the development squad up as well, are those progressions for, for young lads coming to Buxton Football Club beneficial for them as well to sort of as, as a learning curve to get to go and to see the first team and particularly how strong it's become this year, get to go and be involved in those sort of players? 100%. Um, it's one of the massive tools that we use. It's You're engaging not only the players but the parents. They see that there's pathways from the academy. Um, so we could be taking these lads in from 15, 16 years of age and we could have them for the rest of you know, their playing career. Um, we're about development, you know, so these young lads are not just coming in to, to develop the football skills, it's life skills as well. And it's something as a part of Buxton Football Club that we offer. Um, we're looking to provide the whole package and within 12 months we, we feel we're, we're very, very close to offering that. Um, you know, the last year was good, we, last year was a success in my opinion. Um, you know, from a blank canvas to where we are now, intake's been good, the standard's been good. Um, and like I said, we're all excited now from the academy through to the development squad and also the first team's buzzing the way it is and everybody's taking it on board and everybody sees now that that's where they want to be playing. The calibre of players have come in and they've been fantastic with the lads as well, um, coming down and sharing their knowledge and experience. It's been great for, for all of us. Yeah, obviously touching on that, obviously it's also given, given Gary a sort of an opportunity to allow the first team players that, that sort of need it to come in and, and maybe get involved with the academy and do little bits, maybe for fitness, maybe you know, just, just to help them along if they've, if they've, if they've had um, a bit of time out, being part of it and obviously helping coaching with the young lads as well. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been beneficial not just to the, to the younger lads, to the, to the first teamers as well. Um, I guess obviously being involved with the first team, do you, do you feel that you're now building something as well for the academy where the lads are getting used to the way that Gary's going to want the first team to play? So it's, it's a one club mentality that actually, should you be able to step out of the academy as players have already done, that they're ready to go and play with the first team or the development squad or, or go into men's football? Yeah, 100%. Uh, one of the philosophies is that we, we mirror down. Uh, what the first team uh, style of play is, philosophies, standards, uh, and that's just transferred through, through the, to the development through to the academy. Uh, we're very much about developing youngsters. Uh, we want them to represent the first team. They are provided with opportunity, so we have to develop these lads and know that um, when that time comes, they're expected to know what, what Gary wants them at first team level. Um, whether that be set pieces, jobs, roles, responsibilities, both on and off the pitch. Um, you know, so it is very much that one club. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Obviously, good luck in the, uh, the FA Youth Cup ne next Thursday at Tarmac Sylvan Stadium and uh, hopefully some of the fans will uh, come and join you. Hope so. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.
For all the latest results and fixtures, including from our academy and development squads, follow our social channels below and visit our website at buxtonfc.co.uk. Now all the goals from our development squad's last game, which included a handful of first team players. Finally, Danny catches up with striker Diego to discuss the current first team squad, his new two year deal, and the upcoming season. Diego, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, good for the fans to, uh, to finally see you sign back with the, with the Bucks for a two year contract. Um, How does it feel being back, back at the start at Silvers? Yeah, it's good, obviously. I enjoy uh, playing with, with Gas and, and lads that I know. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting started. Prolific last year, which obviously probably was the main reason behind the fans, obviously so desperate to stay. I'm sure you've seen it on social media, sort of pushing you. Um, you know, did it feel good? Obviously, a lot of it came. Gary came in, obviously he brought the players around you. Did you see the benefit from that for yourself and your game improving as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Gaffer and Ward brought in some lads that definitely brought out a better side of my game. Got me more chances, more opportunities to score goals. And like I said, even. Even when we played the other night, the fans were in crop, they were singing the name and that is, is a player, no matter what level you're at, it's, it's always good to hear that, so. Yeah. Obviously, a, a difference this year, as you said, Gary bringing in players last year, but again this year, um, the likes of Wedgbury, um, Granny, I guess Kilgallen, obviously was at Sheffield United, the same as yourself. Um, is it a benefit, again, them guys coming in, giving a different side to the game as well? Yeah, definitely, because... It's lads who are coming in from the high levels. Like I said, one of the lads has played in the Premier League. Um, the experience they've gotten that they can put into our team is brilliant and it's only going to benefit us. And it also, for me, before I've signed, I've seen all these lads coming from Conference, Conference North and in the league and be signing. It's, it shows the ambition that the club's got, the chairman's got. And as a player, you, you want to play in a team where the ambition is to get promoted. And I feel that's what it is here. Yeah. yeah, I guess, obviously, last year, Start didn't go exactly to plan. Um, obviously, Gary came in. Performance has turned, and, and obviously, like games like South Shields, top of the league, maybe argue that you could have come away with more than a draw there and, and stuff like that. Do you now feel like with the additions as well that it's actually it's a squad that could maybe actually go on and challenge properly this year? Yeah, I know, like talking in change room with lads, obviously, we've not been together that long, but training sessions we've had, pre season games. Everyone's got the same ambition, the same target, and that's that's to get promoted. I think everyone in there really does believe we can, we can do it. Like, and it's it's a strong squad um, in in all positions. There's, there's lads, um, even looking up top, like yourself, second top goal scorer last season. Wally, third top goal scorer last season. Obviously, you've got probably two of the best keepers in the league. Does that competition for players, do you feel that within the squad now that it's actually it's going to drive people forward? Yeah, I know. Uh, I think as well it's brought out 
better performances from certain players in certain positions where we feel like it's other players in my position we want to take my shirt. So in order to be starting my first game of the season or at least get a lot of games while this season goes through, the lads need to be performing well. Brilliant, no worries there. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, obviously hopefully a good season. Thanks for joining us here on Books TV. We hope to see you all tomorrow for our home friendly against Leek here at the Tarmac Silverland Stadium. Kick off 3 p.m. On Tuesday, we return to the Tarmac Silverlands for the visit of Conference Northside Chorley. Kick off 7.45 p.m. We'll have highlights and analysis of both games in next week's episode of Books TV.